Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we are going to be working through an example problem concerning radiation heat transfer. To keep things simple for now, we're only going to consider two surfaces in 2D. So our two surfaces are going to have equal length and they're going to be separated by an angle theta. Now we're going to let theta equal 60 degrees. We're going to define some w, which is the depth that we're considering into the page. If this is a properly 2D problem, these plates should be infinitely long. But if we consider just some part of it w, then we can define an area, which is going to be equal to w times l. And that'll be the area of either plate. Now to get a full picture, we also need to define the temperature and the emissivity of each of these surfaces. So let's call this surface one and this surface two. So for surface one, the temperature is gonna be 800 Kelvin and the emissivity is going to be 0 0.6. And then for surface two, the temperature will be 400 Kelvin and the emissivity is going to be 0 0.3. So that'll be everything we know about the problem. What we're trying to do with this problem is find our heat flux, which is simply the total heat flow per unit area. Now, to start off, we're going to be using the circuits analogy. And what we say with that is that the change in potential is going to be equal to our Q dot multiplied by the total resistance. Now, this change in potential, that's going to be our black body radiation and our radiosity. So the picture that we'll draw as a resistive circuit is simply three resistors connecting our two surfaces. On the left here, we're going to have the black body radiation of surface one. And on the right, we're going to have the black body radiation of surface two. And then these two points in the middle are just the radiosities of our two surfaces. Now, in previous videos, we called these resistors R1, R2, and R12. R1 and R2 are our surface resistances, and we can write R1 as 1 minus epsilon 1 over epsilon 1a. Likewise, R2 will be 1 minus epsilon 2 over epsilon 2a. And I'm able to use this general A since our surfaces have the exact same area. Now, we can go and plug in values for epsilon 1 here. We can say that R1 is going to be 1 minus 0.6, or 0 0.4, divided by 0 0.6, multiplied by 1 over A. Doing the same thing for R2 gets us 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.3, multiplied by 1 over A. This middle resistor is our space resistance, and that's just equal to 1 over A multiplied by the view factor. So here we need to go look up what the view factor is. And for this geometry, our view factor is equal to 1 minus sine of 1 half times theta. So plugging in theta here, we end up with sine of 30. Sine of 30 is 1 half, and so we end up with just a view factor of 0 0.5. So plugging the 0 0.5 in, we end up with a space resistance, R12, which is equal to 1 over 0.5, or 2, times 1 over A. So putting that all together, our total resistance is going to be equal to 1 over A multiplied by 0.4 over 0.6, or just two-thirds, plus seven-thirds, plus two. So simplifying that, we just end up with a total resistance of five divided by A. So next, we need to find this delta P, the change in potential. And the change in potential is just going to be the difference in these EB terms. Our black body radiation from surface one is going to be sigma multiplied by t1 to the fourth. The sigma is 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8, and that has units of watts per
per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth, and that'll be multiplied by 800 Kelvin to the fourth. So plugging that in, we end up with 23.2 kilowatts per meters squared. EV2, we'll do much the same way. And that'll end up as 1.45 kilowatts per meter squared. So defining our Q dot as moving from left to right, we can say that our delta P is equal to EB1 minus EB2, and that'll be equal to Q dot multiplied by our total resistance. So plugging things in, we can see that our heat flux just naturally falls out here. So that's the Q that we're looking for. And so we have this number on the left is going to be equal to 5 times Q. So all that's left is to plug and chug. And we end up with Q is equal to 4.35 kilowatts per meter squared. And that is how we handle radiation heat transfer between two surfaces.